Hi everyone and welcome to Blender Graphics. Thank you for joining me for another Photoshop tutorial. And we've actually got a fun one in store for you today. It's gonna be a two part episode where we're gonna create this fire and ice composition. And for part one, we're primarily gonna focus on the ice techniques and give you some different tips and tricks of how we can create this fun effect. And part two, we're gonna focus on the fire part of it. So if you wanna follow along, please go ahead and get all the stock images in the description below. And let's just go ahead and jump right into this. All right, so here we are with our fresh canvas, 1350 by 1080, 300 PPI. We're turning on our first base image here. And I've already done a little bit of work here with the camera raw filter, because if you notice, there's quite a bit of noise and grain. So I just turned that off. If we come into our camera raw filter to kind of see what I'm working with, you can see that I did the noise reduction quite a bit. And um, so I went ahead and did that. And then let's zoom out here a little bit. I also went ahead and just extracted the arms from the background already. So you can see we have our left hand and our right arm here ready to go. So to get started, let's unlock that background layer. We're going to fill that with black. Make sure that it is set as your default foreground. And we'll just call this our background. And then we'll go ahead and just um, label this one as well. Just call this our backup. It's always nice to have one just in case if you ever mess up. All right, so with these top layers selected here, we want to add a gradient map and you can just hold down the alter option right in between there to clip that to it. And with this gradient map, I usually like to work with highlights, midtones and shadows for the shadow option. I've already went out and picked a color. So this is going to be 0, 2, 2, 2, 3, 9. If you want to follow along, you can always change up the colors if you like. Totally up to you. Now for to add another color stop here, we just need to bring our cursor right below the slider and just click and that'll add a new one. And for this midtone here, we're going to use 3E7189 and let's hit OK. And then lastly, let's go to our highlights and we're going to do one final one. And for this, let's go ahead and use the color B6F4FF and we'll hit OK. Again, feel free to use different colors if you wish. I'm just going to go ahead and roll with these. OK, let's go to our top texture, highlight that, press Command J to make a copy of it and we're going to send this below. And first thing we want to do is lower the opacity so we can kind of see what we're doing here. And then we're going to resize this by pressing Ctrl or Command T and then just dragging those end anchor points. And if you hold down the Ctrl or Command keys and then click on these end points, we can just distort this plane a little bit. So right now I'm just trying to find that plane that is essentially parallel to the arm itself. So let's just drag these out a little bit and something like this looks good. We can then right click this, go to our warp feature here. And what we're going to do now is I'm just dragging these endpoints here. So instead of having this texture completely flat against the arm, I want to wrap it around. So it just gives it a bit more of a realistic element. Now, once you are done doing that and you're satisfied with what you've got here and what you've created, you can either hit that check mark at the top or just press enter. So let's turn up the opacity and we're going to go back to make sure that it's clipped to the arm itself and we can add a layer mask. And then we're going to invert that by pressing Ctrl or Command I. At the top here, I just want to turn our opacity down to somewhere about 20% using a soft round brush tip. And now we're just going to paint this texture back in. And it's completely up to you of how much you want to bring this texture back. We do have a couple of textures that we're going to work with. So I'm, this is just going to be our first coat. I obviously don't want to lose the integrity of our arm itself. So make sure that even some of those creases in the hands, I don't want to interrupt. I still want to see the full definition of the hand itself. I don't want to lose those important details. And if you notice too, this texture is obviously just a little bit different of a hue than our base color is. So we'll make sure to correct that before we finish this up as well. All right, so texture one, I think we're good to go. Let's move to texture number two. We're just gonna repeat those same steps. We're making a copy of that so that way we do have our backup. And let's lower the opacity and resize this. Literally doing the exact same steps as we did with our first texture. So. It should just start to become muscle memory after a while here. Let's just make sure that we're on the right plane first. Okay, something like that. And let's warp this and make sure that the texture is wrapped around the arm. All right, so this should just about do it. And let's hit that check mark, turn up the opacity, and let's add a, or sorry, clip it to the layer below. And now let's add the layer mask and then we're going to invert it. And going back to our soft round brush, let's paint this texture in now. Another thing that we're going to have to pay attention to is whenever we bring in these textures, you start to lose those original lighting elements. 
So the arm itself and the subject starts to look a bit more flat. So we're gonna have to adjust that as well a little bit later on. First things first, let's go to our color balance adjustment layer. And now we're just gonna adjust our colors a little bit here, clip it below. And we're just gonna drag this to the cyans a little bit, as well as our blues and our midtones. And this is just gonna help us out quite a bit just making these little adjustments right here. Yeah, I think that looks really good. And we can uh, maybe adjust this a bit more to the cyan a little bit. Again, just kind of play around with it and experiment with it. So the next thing we want to tackle is we want to make a copy of that original arm and bring that bottom layer up to the top. We're going to add a hue and saturation adjustment layer to this because what we want to do is just make this completely black and white. So let's go to the saturation and bring that anchor to the left. We'll highlight these two layers together and then we're going to right click, convert it to a smart object. And then let's just rename this our arm copy and then we can rename this one as well. But with that top copy selected, we're going to go to filter and then we want to go to our filter gallery and we're looking for the plastic wrap filter. So you've noticed here, I have my highlight strength up to about 12 details all the way up and smoothness is right around three. So let's hit OK, invert that by pressing command I. And then we want to put this into a screen blend mode. So all the dark parts go away. And then let's add the layer mask to this and then invert the layer mask. And what we're doing now is not only this is going to help bring out the highlights a bit, this is also going to give us a bit more of a frosted look. And I think that just kind of looks really cool with this effect. So just go ahead and give me a few seconds with this. And I'm just going to continue to touch up different parts of this arm and then we can move on. All right, let's take a quick look at the before. And let's go ahead and turn that back on to see our adjustment. Yeah, things are looking really good. All right, I want to go ahead and tweak up our colors a little bit. So I'm going back to our gradient map and essentially I'm just going to shift all of these uh, midtones, shadows, highlights to something a bit more in the blues um, hue and not so cyan. So let's just kind of adjust these accordingly. And then uh, our last one, we'll just do our highlights real fast. And with these corrections, that's definitely going to match our textures a lot better. Okay, so our next goal is we just want to emphasize our midtones, shadows, and highlights. And to do that, we're going to use uh, solid color adjustment layers. So for this first one here, we'll start with our dark points. Just find a nice blue tone to work with. This will be our darkest colors. And let's just put this into a soft light blend mode. And with that, now we can just kind of adjust this color a bit more so we can kind of get a better idea of the tone we want to work with. So something like that looks good. We'll hit OK and we'll clip it below. And then once we do that, we can actually go ahead and just rename this layer and we'll just call this our uh, our dark points here. So, you know, <laughs> really original, right? All right, so we've got that one taken care of. We're adding another solid color adjustment layer. For this, I actually went ahead and found the color ahead of time. So for this, we're gonna use 3E2FF and then you can go ahead and hit OK. And then we'll put this into a soft light blend mode. Make sure again that it's clipped and we'll turn that off and then we'll add our last one and this is going to be D8F9FF and then hit OK for that one. This will also be in the soft light blend mode, clip it below and then what we want to do is just go ahead and turn on all of these layers but we want to invert all of the masks. And then what we're going to do is just start with our darkest portion first and then we'll just build up the effect from there. So click on that dark layer mask first and then we're just going to kind of go around some of these edges here. again. It's pretty easy because you can already see where the darker points are on the hand. So we're just going over those and exaggerating some of those points a bit. And we'll zoom in just so we can kind of get a better idea here. But this just kind of helps with that contrast as well. And I usually like to have higher contrast images. So that's my reasoning for doing this. Okay, and then let's go to our midtones here and then just add a little bit of color onto these portions. And I'm already noticing that I want to just change this up a little bit and just maybe something a bit more to the blue hue. Let's try this. Okay, so let's roll with this. I think this looks a little bit better than what it was before. Okay, and then you can see these before and after. We change up the color just a bit more. It's still a bit too cyan for me. I know at this point, it's just kind of really fidgety, just trying to find those right colors, see a lot of before and after just to kind of see what we like. But let's do that. We'll go to our highlights now and just emphasize some of these portions as well. All right, so I'm just gonna take a couple of seconds as we do this and then we can move on.
And let's just zoom out of this to see how it looks. Yeah, we're on the right path. All right, so let's click that top layer, hold on the shift key, click the bottom, and then group that together. And then we're gonna make a copy of that group and turn that into a smart object so we can pretty much compress that into one layer. And with this new layer, we're just gonna add a couple of layer styles. So let's um, first go ahead and just double click on that layer. And then we wanna go into the inner glow tab. So let's click on that. And you can see that uh, I've already left off with like a nice saturated blue and it's in the linear dodge blend mode. And you can just kind of see the before and after with that added on there. So it's a nice little effect and we can just kind of play around with the opacity just to see what we like. Again, this is completely up to you in how you want to achieve this ice effect. But I'm kind of working with something like this here. We're going from the edge, maybe playing around with the range a little bit. And the size, usually like the, the size, choke, and range tend to be the most uh, impactful with the inner glow. Okay, so let's just see this one more before and after. It's a nice little subtle effect. I like it. Let's hit OK. And I'm actually going to add a couple more solid color adjustment layers for more highlights and shadows. So we're going to start with our dark portion first. And I have 334258. I've already found this color ahead of time. Let's clip this below. And you know what? Um, we'll just put this into a multiply blend mode, invert this. And then uh, we're just going to kind of touch up some of these edges and again, just emphasize some of these darker portions. I know we already did the highlights, midtones, and shadows. You'll often find me just adding and adding on top of each other. Just to me, it's easier in the end if I ever want to go back and do something. I have more layers to work with that I can adjust instead of just one overall layer which, you know, maybe some people prefer that, but this is just kind of my workflow to this. And so we can just see the before and after on that. We can turn down the opacity a little on this one here. Okay, so let's add our highlight solid color adjustment layer. And for this, let's go ahead and type in, let's see, CAF7FF is kind of what I'm working with. And let's just put this into maybe one of these blend modes. Um, you know what, we can always just kind of go back to normal, which I think I'll do. I'll stick with normal, maybe change up the color just a little bit more. At this point, I'm just kind of experimenting. So let's see here. Let's do that. Invert this mask. And then same thing. Let's just kind of touch up some of these areas. And if you notice too, as I'm going over some of these fingers that my pinky finger and like the ring finger it's starting to blend in with the rest of the palm of the hand. So we're gonna have to touch that up and clean that up a little bit so we have a bit more separation. But I like this before and after, and let's just touch up a little bit more areas before we move on. And let's just see how this looks a little bit. Okay, maybe just right here on the wrist, we'll just kind of create a bit more of a highlight on that edge there. I'm probably being a bit too much of a perfectionist right now, but you know, I can't resist. But you want to do the same thing with yours. Just take your time with this and just make sure that it's not rushed and it's nice and clean. All right, so I think we should go ahead and start adding that separation in now. We're going to add a just a blank layer in between those solid color adjustment layers. I just have like a dark blue. I'm going to zoom in pretty close on this and switch to a hard round brush tip. And starting with the pinky, I just want to create some separation right here. I know up close it looks like a really solid line, but when you zoom out a bit, it is going to look a little bit more... Um, natural, I guess is the best way to say it. So let's do the same thing with this ring finger here, just kind of create that separation. It just was starting to combine into one complete element instead of two individual fingers. So yeah, it's starting to look pretty good. We'll do the same thing with these two fingers here, and we might just kind of lower the opacity in the end. But for right now, we're working with this and seeing what we've got. Okay, let's zoom out and yeah, let's first go ahead and turn down the opacity on this and then that should just do the, uh, the trick there of what we're trying to achieve. Yeah, we'll just leave it like that. Again, if you're doing this and maybe you want to add a little bit of a Gaussian blur to it and soften it up, you can do that. I went back to a soft round brush just so I can kind of 
touch up some of these outermost portions of the edge and maybe some of the parts in between the fingers here just to again kind of create a bit more contrast with that all right so with this new layer at the very top here we're just going to create a bit of kind of like a rim glow and light to the very edge of the arm here and it's not going to be over the entire outline but we are at about 100 percent opacity just brushing on the outside of the edge here to just create some really bright portions which is going to help create that glowing effect and obviously I'm just kind of speeding through this, but it's at least giving you a general idea of what we're trying to achieve here. And if you just add this to the entire edge, to me it looks a bit unnatural. I know a lot of people do like that effect, but I tend to just kind of pick and choose where I want some of these bright portions. Alright, so with those little additions, I think that should do the trick. That looks nice. Just kind of seeing what some of these layers look and if I need to make any modifications, we can do that. So I'm just lower this down a bit. Okay. And let's go ahead and add a layer underneath. And this is going to be our back glow. So we have like a nice saturated blue. And we're going to have a very low opacity, just like right about 10%. But we're going to start creating a little bit of a glow just on the back side of the hand. If you put it on top, you start to lose some of that texture and that definition. So a lot of times I just kind of put this behind the hand itself. And then increase the opacity the closer you get to the hand as well so it just kind of slowly dissipates into the environment okay so we can add another layer on top of this one just to kind of create a more intense rim light and we're going to change it the color a little bit so it's a bit brighter as well and not so saturated and for this just again kind of at 100 percent opacity this time and just working right around the edge at those areas that i've already started to increase the highlights on the edge so we're just emphasizing those points Again, you don't want to do it on the entire hand. Just kind of go over those portions that we already started to create more of a highlight on. Okay, that looks good. Let's add one final layer and then we will be done. And with this layer, it's going to be just kind of like that cold air, that foggy, hazy look that comes off of any item that is really cold. So that's what we're doing. We're just using a cloud brush and let's just kind of get started to see the color. Okay, maybe it changes up a little bit, something a bit lighter. And let's try this one. Okay, so we'll get rid of that and then we can just lower the opacity a bit on this and then we'll just start to touch up some of the areas here. If you don't have a cloud brush, I do have a tutorial on how to make one. Um, so go ahead and check that out. Uh, it comes with other brushes as well. So it's not just a cloud brush You can learn how to make like a texture brush and a couple of other ones. So feel free to give that a look into and then um, You know, you'll have some more brushes on your hand But this is going to pretty much do it for us uh, if you want to add on a little bit more maybe add some particles kind of like um, like a frozen snow effect on top of this you're more than welcome to I'm just gonna leave it at this for now so check in again next week and then we'll do the second part of this with that left arm and create more of a fire effect awesome guys i hope you really enjoyed this if you liked it please subscribe to the channel if you're not doing so already and give it a big thumbs up and i hope to have you back for next week for that next tutorial i'll see you then take care